The scream of a child is travelling through the apartment. A flying pen, or worse, a book. Cry. Finally, in desperation, the parents give the answers to the child. It does not have to be a nightmare for both the children and parents. So how do we make the learning process run smoothly? I invite you to watch. My name is Sophie, and you are watching Practical Parenting, a YouTube channel established to inspire you to become a better parent by promoting intimacy parenting and a non-violent upbringing. Once a week, you will find an animation on an interesting educational topic. If you are interested in these matters, subscribe to our channel. Certainly, not only one parent has fought this unequal fight during the general lockdown this spring. However, you have to be prepared for any eventuality, especially in the fall and winter of 2020. The new reality is often both beyond children and parents. Both sides are put in a completely new situation and do not know how to handle the scenario at hand. Parents have a problem convincing their child to concentrate at home, while the children are not prepared for the fact that suddenly mum or dad miraculously turns into a teacher of English, mathematics, geography, biology, chemistry, and even art, even though all they can draw is a house with a chimney. There was a study which was recently conducted on the Brainly platform among Polish students. The surveys show that almost 70% of students that are using online learning and what they miss the most is getting instructions from the teacher. This responsibility ends up falling back onto the parents. Although teachers tried their best to ensure the students are provided with the best materials possible, the biggest part of the work is encouraging the child to complete the tasks. This responsibility tends to fall back on the parent. And of course, they have to control the quality of work which the children produce. Everything sounds quite simple, but whoever has tried already knows how difficult it is to get a child to study at home. They keep asking questions like, but do I really have to? They need to discuss each task. They learn quickly, but inaccurately and in five minutes, they don't remember what they were doing. They don't spend as much time and attention on learning as they do in school. If you have also had this problem with your own children, I invite you to listen to six tips on how to teach a child at home and not go crazy at the same time. Number one, organize a study-only space with your child. Make the desk a temporary school not a place to play. Clean up the space with your child, removing unnecessary distractions which may distract your student. Almost every young child likes to surround themselves with many things which adults they call a mess. But for a child, everything is important. Useful and in a moment they will definitely need it. These things include drawings, Play-Doh, Lego blocks and snacks. However, it is worth taking care to minimize distractions during learning. Why is it so important to remove unnecessary items? What reaches the student's eye stays in their brain for a very short time, 0.5 to 1 seconds. Only a small number of what we see remains in the short-term memory afterwards. If we limit a child's visual attractions while learning, they will not have their attention shifted so easily. Reducing distractions is important in order to make it easier for your child to learn. It is obvious for adults to focus on the book or notebook, even if there is a pile of other things around. However, our child's brains are still developing and attention span increases with age. Therefore, it is important to remember to limit unnecessary distractions while learning. Once you have organized the space in the temporary school together, move on to step two. Number two, planning. Plan the learning schedule together carefully each day. 
At school, students have a timetable which sets a certain rhythm for the day. There are always incentives which the child will associate with various types of classes. For example, if they have an IT class that day, the student will look forward to being able to sit and learn in front of the computer. However, when they go to geography, they have a good attitude, as this is their last lesson of the day. Make a similar timetable at home. Have a look with your child, what they need to do each day, and help them plan the learning sequence. I have an additional tip for you. Specialists in the field of neurodictactics have proven that students learn better if they are given an entwined and mixed parts of material. Therefore, it is better to break down learning from one field into smaller parts and learn it alternatively with other subjects. This interweaving of knowledge can be difficult at first as it differs from the 60-minute lesson scheme proposed in school, although it has been proven to have long-term effects. The knowledge acquired during these learning methods stay in our memory for a longer period of time. Also remember that you have to plan break times. The breaks aid in consolidating the learned material. The young body gets tired much faster and the awareness of the upcoming break can mobilize and energize. They also help to motivate your child. Number three, help your child find the benefits. It is important to find benefits with your child from learning fractions, capitals of Europe, or reading books. Although, I realize this is not always easy. Even ourselves in adulthood must remember or rediscover our why. Why do I go to work? Why did I sign up for a language course? Or why do I have to do the laundry again? When motivating ourselves to practice something often, it is helpful to use the motivation of benefits. Children up to a certain age find it difficult to determine the benefits from learning a given section of material on their own. They are motivated if benefits follow. For example, if I do this task, I will get my favorite ice cream, or I will read 10 pages and be able to play on the phone. Such benefits are also important and needed, but not only these ones. When looking for benefits, it is important to focus on skills rather than knowledge. Today, knowledge is at your fingertips. All you have to do is ask Uncle Google or Aunt Wikipedia about everything. Therefore, knowledge for a young person is not valuable enough. So find skill-based benefits. For example, learning capitals will help you try out a new memory technique. Knowledge of multiplication is useful for quickly estimating prices in a store. And reading a book develops the imagination. If you and your child develop some interesting benefits from learning, share them in the comments. Number four, create competition. This point is important not only when studying. Competition has been an effective motivation since the beginning of human evolution. Even then, the primitive man was in competition with others. The competition during hunting or searching for a partner was sometimes very fierce. Only the best, the strongest and most persistent survive. They survived because they won. Competition is something that flows in the veins of every person, including the little one who is just going to school. Anyone who has played a boring board game with a child knows what I mean. Those following the pawn to the finish line, full of passion and hope, or tears in the eyes when you have to go back to the start. And finally, the child's outburst of joy in the event of not necessarily always fair, win. But how can the child's need to compete be used when studying at home? Arrange a competition between children. Invent competitions. For example, between siblings 
or remotely with classmates. In the case of siblings, who for obvious reasons are each of a different age, and also at a different level of learning, think about the matter at the planning stage. Let everyone have the same number of points to use for the whole day, let's say 20. When you create a learning plan together, give one point for easy tasks and more points for difficult tasks. The sum of all the tasks will be 20. For example, if your child reads a chapter for history class, two points. If they solve some equations for math class, three points. And drawing for art class, one point. Of course, for one person, this drawing could be worth four points and another one point. It is a matter of interpretation and always taking into account the child's efforts and skill. Once you have your plan ready, Give your child points for each task they complete. To increase the effect, you can use a whiteboard or draw your own points table on a piece of paper. After reaching the desired number of points, don't forget about the much anticipated reward for all of their hard work. If you have one student at home, suggest him or her compete with their classmates. For example, the first student who reads and finishes a school project sends a text message to the others and they gain a class reader award. Number five, another tip, teaching others. While the thought of learning by teaching others sounds like a bit of a paradox, it is an effective learning method. Scientists from the University of Montreal in Canada have conducted interesting scientific research on learning through repetition. The participants were asked to learn words by repeating, taking into account numerous variations. For example, repeating words in their minds or by moving their lips only, and also by repeating the words aloud. Either looking at the screen or at another person. During these studies, they proved that a person remembers the most when they articulate the words aloud and at the same time addresses another person. Taking this research into account, it is worth using this technique in your homeschool. Your children can learn from each other, reading aloud, repeat, explain. An additional benefit is the consolidation of knowledge. After all, there is nothing preventing an older child from explaining something to their younger siblings if they have a problem with learning a new material. Warning, in the research on remembering through using the speaking repetition technique, no significant differences were found in the group of people which had a careless listener. This also affected the people who repeated to a person who made it clear that they did not want to listen to them carefully. Therefore, if your child does not have any siblings to whom they can explain and repeat out loud the learn material, look for a persistent listener in your environment. For example, a grandmother who has always had a lot of patience, or a grandfather who has lots of experience with listening to the grandmother. Number six. Finally, the last piece of advice. Put the acquired knowledge and skills into practice. Putting knowledge into practice is not always possible in school and at home, it is more easy to incorporate. For example, you can ask questions to your child and follow them up by practicing them in situations at home. You could ask, did you learn about the units of measure today? You can follow this by taking your child to the kitchen and weighing the products which you will use to cook dinner. And if there was a lesson that day about the Spartans, then suggest a war game which is based on the facts on which your child has learned earlier. It can also be a similar movie or a computer game. There are many possibilities. You just need to enter the child's world for a while. Just don't forget to go back to being an adult. Such application of knowledge and practice will not only increase the child's motivation to learn tomorrow, 
It will also help the student to be better at remembering the material studied today through deep processing. I hope these six points will make it easier for you, dear listener, and to undertake this difficult and responsible task of educating a child at home. If you have any other useful tips for distant learning, feel free to comment. Certainly many parents will benefit from them. Wishing you lots of parental love and close relationships with your loved ones. I thank you for your attention and invite you to discover practical parenthood. If you are not yet one of our subscribers of the channel Practical Parenting, please click the subscribe button and wait for our next animation.